Hello there everybody, it's Taikatar here and welcome back to another episode of Summoner Only. We got a few small things to take care of here as we march slowly but surely towards our wall of flesh fight and transition into hard mode. So let's keep going here. We got some fishing quests to do, we got some wall of flesh arena to make, and we got some Crimson to isolate as well. I can't remember if uh, if we have a quest available tonight or not It is halfway through the night, so I'm guessing we don't we probably already did it last time. Yeah Okay, so the quest is done first thing that I want to kind of show you since last episode I did expand our snow village a tiny bit and got a second little house added and I also slightly decorated around our pylon here in this special little cave so I tried to stick with the copper, orangey, yellowy theme kind of that we started just to mix in that other different color. And so this first house, I don't think I've changed anything with the first house that we made last episode. I'm still really happy with how that came out. I think it's pretty cool. And then down by the pylon, I added little pieces of copper bricks um, around in sort of a, uh, I don't know what you call it, or a ray-like pattern where the bricks just go away from the center. Mostly just a few copper bricks mixed in, but then the rest of it I sort of jumbled up snow brick, ice bricks, and some gray bricks and some stone slabs as well. And then added some backgrounds to fill in the, uh, the cave opening back inside here so it's not so open. Pretty simple, but it fills it in so it's more than nothing now. Out here I got the second little house built over here. We have our golfer in here right now. And yeah, I really just tried to theme it pretty much after the first one. Oh, Fallen Star. But I made it a little bit smaller so it's a little bit cozier. And it just has one room up here. The, the bottom floor down here is too small to be a house and it doesn't have the furniture in it anyway. I'm happy that we got our three rooms here that I was hoping for in the snow village. And with our tinkerer here, we can actually get really good prices on reforging and other things if we need to buy. Oh, also, I realized last episode, so I bought our pylon from the tinkerer for eight and a half gold almost. If I had just bought it from the mechanic, she's the one who actually likes the snow biome, so we could have saved 50 silver if we just bought it from her, so I'm a little bit of a noob there. But we do have over two platinum, close to three, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. Ooh, also she's selling the mechanic's rod right now. You know what, since we got the gold, that's probably worth picking up. I mean, the fiberglass fishing pole is a lot cooler and it's rarer, so I do like it more, but in terms of functionality, the mechanics rod does have a beat in the fishing power department. So let's keep that, that's kind of nice. Also, I still have not made ourselves a grand design, so let's go ahead and buy the materials for this. I keep forgetting about this, but this is definitely something that we want to, uh, want to get going on here. I think that's all we need from her. And of course, from Trojan, we need to get a ruler or whatever it is. Trogum. Trojem. I guess it could be Trojem. I don't know, man. <laughs> okay, let's uh, head back with our new materials, new fishing pole. Yeah, I just thought I'd real quick show off this little house that I worked on, though. I had a good time with these two projects, actually, overall. It was really fun. Our multicolored wrench first off. And then the grand design, perfect. Don't need the mechanical display to be forced. I'll just keep it on normal since it's not hardcore. If I step on a trap, it's not the end of the world, which probably will happen knowing me. <laughs> and I guess what I should do is just uh, try to grab some materials here. I think if I just grab a few bombs and some blocks, we should be able to do some quick isolation on our crimson biomes. It won't take long at all. I don't, I'm not going to do too much. I'm probably just going to make barriers on either side of the biome and not worry about like completely digging under the whole thing. I'm wondering if I can just use mud blocks for most of this actually because grass can't grow on the mud blocks and it can't, regular mud by itself can't be corrupted. The only problem would be if uh, we used it at a jungle and the jungle grass spread and then was corrupted later on. But it looks like we have no crimson in our jungle and beyond. So I think the mud should actually work just fine. And since it's daytime, let's go check out what's her name with Billy here. How did I forget Billy's name? Oh, it's it's the Scorpio fish. That's one of my favorites. I really love the new desert quest fish. Now the question is, where do we even catch that? I guess there's an oasis over to the left of spawn. Maybe we head over that way. Actually, there's one next to our base too. Let's see if this one's big enough. All right. 
size comparison here. It's slightly bigger, but not very much. Let's just do it here. We might catch a little bit of junk, but I think we should be able to catch the fish eventually. Starting off with a rock lobster is always good though. And a second one. Wow, we're just reeling in the rock lobsters to start things off. Holy cow, there's a flounder, finally. That's crazy, I've never caught five rock lobsters in a row. We also had a breakage of the line mixed in there too. Okay, the flounders are starting to catch up now. Yeah, I was really surprised to see that many rock lobsters. Hey, there's our Scorpio fish. Okay, cool, think that'll do it for here. Uh, let's head over and turn that in real quick. Billy the angler kid. Oh, and we got an angler earring, cool. Okay, that's actually not bad. Um, I will just keep that on us and we can use that whenever we go for the other quest fish. All right, and it looks like I just accidentally lost all the mud that I picked out. Here we go, got it back. All right, let's, uh, let's get our enchantment buff on. Bewitch ourselves real quick. Get another imp and now let's, uh, let's fly around a little bit and try to do some Crimson Isolation while it's daytime. What a lovely day to explore. So we got this part pretty well covered here, I think. We we worked on that a little while ago. Yeah, it goes all the way down to this minecart here. So the bottom of our right-hand side of our base should be pretty dang good. So first up is right here. Actually won't be bad to collect a little bit of this sand too in case we... Uh, need to make any glass at any time. If we can just get down below the sand, I think it will probably be good enough. Okay, here we go, we've broken ground or broken sand. Almost blew myself up with the last bob there. Don't mind me, guys. Let's just straighten out the sides here and then call it pretty much good, I think. Well, I don't know, man. It's probably not gonna be worth doing too much effort down here. <laughs> I said this was gonna be really quick and easy and we weren't gonna try too hard, so probably I'm just gonna leave this at that. And honestly, I don't even need to put a mud covering on this because there's no grass over on this side, so the only grass is this right here. And if that gets crimsoned, then everything over here is already done for anyway. So that's probably all we need to do here. Maybe I could just put a little bridge over the top here. Okay, call that good. Let's see. So the next one is, let's just continue on to the right. Although we could just take a quick, uh, quick shortcut using our pylon, I guess. Get a little extra ground. Look at that. Already putting our snow pile on to use in our world here. Awesome. Oh, I also forgot to mention I did add a little bit of snow on the roofs here. The reason that I hammered them weirdly like this is so that we didn't lose the roof texture for the dynasty shingles. So it looks a little bit funny, but I actually do think it's a little bit better with that wood. Oh, and I also forgot to mention on the outside, I put some benches with uh, lamp posts around. And then this little cave system, I put like a little entrance on. So it actually looks like kind of a established cave. Anyway, it was kind of fun and just added a little bit of detail to the, the biome around our town. So, oh, I forgot we had these two fairy logs here. Ah, oh, we might have to do something cool with those. Okay, good. I already got this little patch mostly contained for now, it looks like. So that's good. Let's see what the other side of this crimson looks like. I may have actually already done more of this than I uh, than I realized. Oh yeah, so we did actually do a good amount of work right here as well. So this, uh, this actually is pretty decent really. I mean, yeah, if we look down there, there's a lot of stone that's gonna be crimsoned, but these cave systems go down and probably there's no chance of stopping it down there anyway, or not without a lot of effort. The, on the bright side though, as I think I mentioned a, at one point, we have our dungeon right here. So that will really hamper it from getting anywhere towards our town or anything like that. So that's actually really handy. I think that's the entire left side of our world pretty much good to go. Let's just check on the right side real quick and then that will be one thing off of the list. Sounds like a lovely blustery day. It's actually been really windy today at uh, AFK where I'm at as well. So that's kind of funny. Ooh, pink prickly pear. Don't mind if I do. Here's where one of the meteorites landed, but I uh, don't really have too much reason to pick that up at the moment. Okay, here we are, we're coming up on it. Oh yeah, we actually have three sunflowers standing at this part. So that's actually good enough to stop that, I think, by itself. I also was just realizing how cool these little surface caves are right here. There's like a pink tree, there's tall trees here, cool little caves with flower vines. It's actually like a really pretty area right here. That might be a potential spot for like a little, I don't know, like we could build a little vacation house over here or something. It's really cool though. All right, let's check out the other side, back to business. Yeah, I totally forgot that we had uh, we had taken any precautions here. 
Also, that's interesting. There's like a, nor a normal green tree right over here. That's kind of funny. All right, so here's the other side. And oh yeah, we did do a lot of work here as well. Well, not a lot, but we got sunflowers and wood to stop the grass. So that's good to go. And is that all of it? Oh yeah, that is. Okay, so I actually just totally didn't remember. The only, the only transition that we didn't do anything with was this one in the desert, which we just blasted out. So I think we're actually good to go. Wow. I guess it was already pretty much checked off the list. I just uh, didn't remember about it. With that taken care of, I think maybe we can maybe run down to the underworld and start setting up an arena down there. And you know what? Now that the gray brick platforms are immune to lava, we could just make a bunch of those and bring them down with us. Now, normally I'd say... 2,000 blocks of platforms is roughly enough for me, but I've never fought the Wall of Flesh with just Summoner, so it's actually gonna be a bit of a new experience. Oh, hey, the party girl's here. Nice, that's cool. Lexus, that's actually interesting. It's like almost nighttime when she arrived. I thought she arrived only like in the mornings, but I guess I'm wrong. She went down in the cave house down there. Let's actually just move her up here. It'd be more fun to have her as part of our actual base, I think. Anyway, as I was saying, I've never fought the Wall of Flesh with the summoner only loadout. I probably do wanna be a little bit on the safe side. All right, let's take our pylon down there. I did get our pylon set up too since last episode with the Tavern Keep and Demo Man down here. The Demo Man sells the pylon, so that was pretty nice. It's actually, he's as happy as he can be too with, because the Tavern Keep is here and he's underground. Anyway, yeah, let's just start, uh, let's just start laying out a bit of a platform down here. See kind of how long it looks as we go and uh, we'll see if we need to go more than 2,000 blocks of platforms or not. You know what I should probably do is uh, grab a Builder Potion. Let's grab one of these and run down there and then we will uh, we'll get this done in no time, probably. Unfortunately, we don't have any of the cool building accessories from the traveling merchant yet, but I'm sure those will be coming with time. Hopefully, anyway. One thing that I do kind of watch out for when I'm doing this, and I may have mentioned this at one point before, but the hammered rounded corners of the obsidian houses they can be a bit of an issue sometimes. Occasionally you can fall through them if weird things happen, especially if you're dashing around with the Shield of Cthulhu and running at certain speeds. So it's just something that has happened to me before occasionally. So I try to make sure that there's no weird hammered corner gaps in it. Just ways for me to mess up the fight and fall down and get trapped in a house, that's all. Get some fire imps while we're down here too. Wow, look at all those demons in the back. There's a giant swarm of them. I wonder if they're going south for the winter or what? Nice magma snail too. We'll need to snag some of these. Another thing, yeah, we're gonna need to do before too long is try out some magma fishing or lava fishing, whatever. Do you know the difference between magma and lava? I mean like the actual real life magma and lava because there is a difference. They are the same substance, but magma is when it's located beneath the surface underground and lava is when it's exposed on the surface. Probably some of you already knew that, but. Wow, this is a really big open spot for uh, <laughs> for the underworld actually right here. Like I haven't had to dig through any houses in quite a while. I guess it might just be partially luck with how the houses right here generated. Oh, there's our 50th Hellbat, that's kind of cool. I guess we haven't spent all that much time down in the underworld on this character yet. Another thing is I may not be using an obsidian shield accessory for the for fighting this guy. So it's probably going to be worth just uh, replacing the entire ground with uh, platforms instead of trying to use any of these hellstone bricks as their floor because it's going to burn us if, uh, if we aren't using the right accessories. Probably I'll just replace this whole layer with the platforms and then we'll be good to go. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't, uh, I don't think I've previously tried, I don't think I've previously used block swap on blocks below pots before, but you can actually swap them out so you can have pots on your own platforms. That's really cool, actually. That could be uh, that could be quite useful in certain uh, building situations. Of course, the problem with pots in incorporating them into builds, they're so fragile, and whenever you touch them with anything, they'll just break. Oh, we got a coin portal. That's the first coin portal I remember getting on this character, at least in a long time, that's for sure. Actually, smashing pots in the underworld 
always just seems to get you so much money. Kind of crazy. Also, looting, like, the shadow chests gets you really good money, which might be a good reason for us to do that. I think uh, we just kind of decided not to earlier because with summoner only, there's nothing that we can use out of those chests. No weapons, I suppose, which is the main thing that you find in shadow chests. Maybe we actually do that today. We could just uh, do it real quick after we get our arena done and uh, just for fun, kind of check out what kind of loot we had in, the, in our shadow chests. I'm also not actually sure. Oh, wow, another shadow chest coming up and a butterfly, cool. I, w I was just gonna say something, but I have no idea what it was. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't very important, so it doesn't matter. Let's see if we can save this butterfly. We got it, mission accomplished. Let's see, so we're, I guess we're almost through with one stack of platforms here. Some of the blocks are definitely used by uh, going through the obsidian houses, so I guess we've probably gone more than a thousand blocks. But let's see, so that's one stack of platforms, or just shy. Oh, actually, oh shoot, I'm, I'm wrong. That was both of our platform stacks, so that's 2,000 actually. Wait a second, was that really 2,000? Man, I'm, I can't, I, I keep questioning myself. I might have quick stacked the other stack in one of these chests. Oh yeah, here they are. Okay, so we had like, we had like two stone platforms sitting in this chest, and it made my entire stack go in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so yeah, we have gone only 1,000 blocks to the right. Oh, wow, we got a bunch of ladybugs up here. And I think I'm probably gonna, probably gonna make like 1,000 more gray brick platforms. Oh, shoot. I'm making the wrong ones. Dang it. I wanted to make the gray brick out of the stone, not out of our platforms that I'm gonna use. I hate it when I do that. Oh, and we got the traveling merchant here. Okay, right after I finish crafting these, I'm gonna check that guy out because otherwise I'm gonna forget. Oh, look, the traveling merchant's right here, actually. He came and visited our monument first off. It, it attracted him, so it's working quite well. Uh, just a DPS meter. Come on, bro. Oh, man, I'm pretty sure we have some chalices, but I'll have to check. And I think we might actually already have the DPS meter as well. Actually, I'm not seeing the DPS meter, so maybe we can pick one of those up just, just to have it, I guess. So let's do that. And let's, uh, let's see if we have chalices too. Wow, I actually don't think we do. So he's not all bad, I guess. Riley's all right with me. Definitely grab some chalices from him. There we go. Cause those are kind of fun to throw in builds here and there. Definitely a, a nice addition to like the pots and books and stuff that we normally have. So we got some extra platforms. I think we're good to head back down. Although maybe before we get back to the building, let's go check with Billy about our quest fish real quick. It's the pink fish in the tundra. We should be able to catch that over here, no problem. Make our way through our little town. Oh, starting off with seaweed. Uh-oh, <laughs> I remember this hole. Wow, check out the nasty DPS of our imps. Also, we just got the pink fish, so that didn't take long at all. One piece of seaweed and then the pink fish. Turn this in and then we'll still have, we should have plenty of builder time left to get our arena finished up. Oh, nothing too exciting, but a couple fishing potions isn't bad. Let's head back down. Man, it's definitely nice having a underground pylon in the underworld. That's one uh, disadvantage to my normal setup where I have my main base sort of in the cavern layer. It makes it a little bit tougher to get to the underworld, but I mean, using a elevator isn't the end of the world by itself, so. We'll just take this lower house uh, layer. Oh my gosh, look at that. An obsidian rose without even trying. So funny though that we got the obsidian rose. So we're actually pretty dang close to the terrace park boots again. I think it's now the the water walking boots maybe that we're missing. Got our, I believe that's our first voodoo demon there as well. So that's good. Man, all kinds of stuff happening all of a sudden. I'm also pretty happy with the amount of uh, like hell butterflies and magma snails that we're finding. They seem to be popping up quite often. Oh, we got a blood moon tonight. Well, good thing uh, that affects us pretty much not at all down in the underworld. You know, I could be wrong about that not affecting us. I don't know if the spawn rates are actually 
increased everywhere in the world. We also got a voodoo demon that spawned in a rather unfortunate space for him. Let's see if we can take him out. Uh, I might have to open it up, it looks like. Oh wait, maybe we could put our flame burst rod in there with him. <laughs> oh well, that's gonna take way too long. Release the demon. Let's see if this guy kills us. Yeah, the this left-hand side of the underworld definitely isn't quite as bridge-friendly as the right side had been for us. Oh, look at that, there's our hundredth Hellbat. Wow, look at all the pots here. That's crazy, there are so many pots right here. That's a lot even for the underworld, I'd say. And you know what's really good at breaking pots is whips. <laughs> so many pot breaking. Oh, and we got one coin portal out of it. Man, we got the goon squad found us again. Oh, no way, we just got a magma stone. Oh my gosh, haven't even killed 150 hellbats yet. Aw, oh, man, that's pretty funny. I just realized, I was thinking that the magma stone was going to be pretty much useless on a summoner run. Oh, as I almost died to the demon scythe. But I might be wrong about that because... We might be able to use it in the final upgrades for like the mechanical glove, uh, the fire gauntlet, I think that's what it's called. Because I think that all builds from like the feral claws, which actually do affect our whips. Normally it says it's just melee weapons, but I think our whips actually qualify for that um, bonus. So maybe it will be cool that we have a magma stone actually. Oh my gosh, no way. A second magma stone. I bet we hadn't killed five hellbats since we got that other one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's why this game is amazing. Well, one of the many reasons why, I guess. Bone serpent incoming. Wow. He dive bombed right on top of the triple chest here. Coming down the final stretch. The last hundred platforms here. Okay, sweet. There's that. Now, let's just, uh, let's craft a bunch of campfires. Alright, so I'm gonna run along, and as soon as our buff disappears right there, I look to the screen and then place the campfire roughly on the edge of the screen where the buff disappeared. So this one's gonna be kind of close to this house. This next one's gonna be here, right close to the edge of this house. And then we'll just go across the whole thing doing this. Oh, passing the middle here. Oh, here we go. We got to the other side. Let's count it as like a 25 campfire arena. So uh, you can you can decide for yourself what that means. Cool, so I'm pretty sure that's our entire arena done. We got four minutes left on our builder potion. Let's head back and let's do a fishing quest in the new day here. And then we'll maybe grab our shadow key and run back down there and do some looting. All right, Billy, what's the quest for today? Ah, it's the clownfish or whatever it's called. Probably the closest buy that's possible, actually. Oh yeah, the clownfish on the first try, baby. Here you go, Billy. And okay, there's our angler vest. Two pieces of the suit are complete. You know what else I haven't done in quite a while is checked on our herb farm. Let's go do that real quick. I just got some more fire blossom while we were down in the underworld. I kind of happened to, but I didn't realize we didn't have all the seeds filled in up here so I can actually grab those. These herbs seem to be growing way slower than normal. Like it's been quite a while since I was down here last and not many of them at all are blooming. I'm starting to wonder if there's something that I don't know about with growing herbs in the jungle slash underground. I've definitely grown herbs underground before so I don't think that would cause a difference but Maybe being in the jungle actually has some effect on them. Let's go ahead and take a shadow key and let's run back down and do a sweep through the underworld. First shadow chest right here. And it's a treasure magnet, cool. So the one thing that we actually will probably be using some point, of course, it's also the most common thing uh, as we get a second one right after. All right, here's a double coming up. I guess triple if you count that one down there. <laughs> Man, there are a lot of shadow chests and it's another dark lance. A couple life force potions though. 
That is very important. It's gonna be nice to pick up gonna be nice to pick up some life force potions down here if we can because we won't be able to craft those for ourselves uh, for a little while still. Oh man, I couldn't quite get that magma snail. Okay, there's Flame Lash and a demonic hell cart too. And here's another treasure magnet. I guess we actually are fighting a ton of these things. I thought it would be funny if we did, but I wasn't really expecting to. And another Flame Lash, wow. Oh, okay, yeah, here's the end. So let's head back home and let's, uh, let's just take a look at what loot we found. So it looks like 22 shadow chests is our total. Three dark lances. Uh, well, actually, I haven't consolidated them all yet. Four Dark Lances, since we got one in here. Three Flame Lashes. And then, how many Treasure Magnets did we end up with? Nine Treasure Magnets. Okay, so nine out of the 22 chests were Treasure Magnets. So, I guess not an overwhelming amount, but... Definitely a lot, that's for sure. Oh, another important thing is four life force potions. With our Crimson quarantined, with our Wall of Flesh arena constructed, I think we're getting pretty close to being ready to transition into hard mode. Maybe we'll just need to do a little bit more fishing, but then we're probably about ready. So I think I'm gonna call this one here for today. The song of the episode is by Hollowfish stay check that one out if you're interested and also check out the discord as always there's a link down below thank you guys a whole ton for watching i really hope you enjoyed the episode and i hope you have an outstanding rest of your day